the trajectory of everything, everything that was going on in the world, my emotional state, that if I didn't put my foot down, that I was going to be someone on TV, like I wasn't actually going to be on TV, but like someone on TV where they're so heavy that they're completely immobile. And I did not want that. Welcome to the Spartan Becca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. Today, our guest, not only is she gonna brighten your day, but April Lauren is 70 pounds into her mission of losing 200 pounds. And we're gonna hear her story and how she's dominating her days and overcoming all of the challenges when it comes to weight loss. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company and FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout to get 30% off their full line of functional lifestyle beverage blends and Go Powder Sticks. Athletic Brewing Company. Their innovative process allows them to brew great tasting craft beer without the alcohol. New customers can get 10% off their entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, Yancey Culp. And today, hey, we're going to talk about somebody that's going to brighten your day because that's the way she lives her life. She loves to brighten the day just a little bit every single day that she has a chance. And her name is April Lauren. And so, April, welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. Hey, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, listeners and viewers out there, JC and I have been doing the fitness game for about 50 plus years. He loves when I say that. Many of you know that my wife is one of the most respected dietitians to ever walk the planet. She's the president of the Collegiate Professional Sports Dietitians Association. She is the athletic assistant athletic director for nutrition, at the University of Texas Athletic Department. She's worked with uh, eating disorders, family nutrition. She's done it all from A to Z in nutrition. Jared and myself and my wife know this world very well, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to be an episode that I think will be one of the most enlightening, educational, helpful, and service-minded guests that we've ever had on. I've I've watched many of April's videos on her amazing YouTube channel. You got to check that out. And she, I don't know if she quite understands yet what a blessing she is. What a blessing she is to the community out there because the majority struggle with her struggle, the majority are struggling right now. And she decided to say, I'm going to come forward as with with a service minded mentality and I'm going to use my story to serve others. And it is freaking crazy powerful. My wife has listened to some of her videos. And from a dietitian perspective, she's like, I love where she's at right now. JC and I, 50 plus years, we love where she's at right now. You, it is very authentic and genuine. And I would argue you, my friend, are one of the best influencers for um, a massive group of people that need the type of service that you are providing for them. So as JC said, thank you so much for coming on the show today. You got my, you yeah. hit my emotions and I, I didn't think that was going to happen, but it darn sure did. Well, Hey, and the, the viewers, uh, viewers and listeners out there need to understand April is on a 200 pound weight loss journey. And, uh, so when Yancey's talking about seeing her videos, uh, I got a chance to watch your, uh, one of your videos of your DECA strong event at iFit in North Carolina recently, and I was just so inspired. So April, um, we're going to, we're going to leave it at that, but I, I do want, I do want to ask you, like, where did this journey start? Like what pushed you? What, what was that thing that just got you started on something that is very challenging for most people on this planet? 
feel like that's a that's a big question. First, thanks for having me and Yancy. You definitely um made me a little teary. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words. Um, I have essentially been on a weight loss journey my whole life. I feel like since I was a kid, I've always struggled with weight. Even when I wasn't struggling with weight, literally in my mind, it was something that was there. So the dieting and not really knowing how to, so playing sports or whatever, if I was a bigger than other girls my age, which I was a little bit older because my I'm a September, September baby. So I started school a little later than some other kids in my grade. So I always struggled with weight. So I started dieting when I was like maybe 12. And I spent so much time wasting time because I thought there was something wrong with me and that the only way for me to lose weight is to essentially crash diet or do something super extreme. And when the pandemic started, I was furloughed um, and that was really rough and I started gaining weight rapidly. I've kind of skipped a lot of the yo-yoing back and forth because it's like every time you, you lose weight kind of in on a crash diet or in an unhealthy way, which is the way I had always done it primarily, um, when you gain it back, you typically gain more. So I was very heavy and then when the pandemic happened and I was furloughed, I was very I just started gaining rapidly again. So I was, then I was laid off. Um, so I worked for a fitness company and we stopped, like our company had to lay off so many people. My entire department was almost laid off, um, except for the department head. Um, I feel like I'm struggling on my words a little bit, but it, I would, I got up to 352 pounds and I never thought I had, I like, I had never, it's hard to wrap my head around being that heavy. It's hard to wrap my head around being the weight that I am now, but reaching that weight, I'm like, I have to change and I can't keep doing this back and forth where I do something and I lose it quickly and then I gain more back or I lose all of the weight I need to lose and then I gain it all back rapidly. And so I just decided to do it slow, sustainably, in a way that I never really thought I could. And I was really surprised when including all food groups that I was able to start losing weight. Now, I struggle now. <laughs> I've struggled all along the path. Um, another big thing that I decided and I kind of put my foot down is I love working out. I always have. Um, and it's something I had stopped doing because it was hard and more difficult as I had gained weight. I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. And so I was a little bit, I don't know how to describe it, but I like, because it got so hard, I stopped doing, which made it exponentially worse. Um, and I decided with all things, whether it's cute workout clothes or it's doing a workout or whatever, that I was not going to allow myself to put off for some future version of myself who I felt was thin enough to be deserving of whatever it is to start doing. So I, my, I had a friend, one of my husbands, um, they were in a school together for the army. She started working out with me. We had a home gym and or put together a home gym because we lived, we lived in the middle of nowhere. So, um, so we had a home gym Luckily, we put it together right before everything happened and you could no longer order gym equipment. Well, you could, but it was very back ordered. And I just started working out, doing what I could. And it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot. It was easier for me to do supported squats than it was for me to walk. So at, when I started my journey, it was physically difficult for me to walk into the grocery store. Like I had extreme lower back pain. Just walking from the parking lot into the store was very painful. And I mean, that's, it's, it's hard to sh kind of share, to share that. And I've been sharing it the whole time on my YouTube channel. So I'm a little bit practiced at sharing, but that is how I got started. I just, I reached my highest weight I had ever been. I knew with 
the trajectory of everything, everything that was going on in the world, my emotional state, that if I didn't put my foot down, that I was going to be someone on TV, like I wasn't actually going to be on TV, but like someone on TV where they're so heavy that they're completely immobile. And I did not want that. To me, all of the things that I love to do are physical. Like I love doing yoga. I love hiking when we were in Utah. I I loved being able to just disappear into a mountain and all of a sudden you're like so far away. It You can't do that when you're significantly overweight as easily. You still can do – there's always a modification for anything you want to do. So I don't want to be discouraged to anyone who's in the place that I was. But I'm just – I'm happy that I started and I'm happy – it's it's amazing how much more I can do now, even just 70 pounds, so not even halfway into my journey. My life is completely different than it was. Yeah. You know, Lord, April, um, the 70 pounds, um, when did you start the journey? It was July 2020. Oh, okay, the end of July June. 2020. Yeah. And so was it progressive? Like, you know, you, you started in one place and now you're doing, you know, uh, things with higher intensity, longer duration. Um, what was what was it like when you first got back started and to where you are now? Because you just you just completed a deck of strong by all means. So when I started like I said, it was a struggle to walk into the grocery store. I started, I didn't focus so much on completely overhauling my diet right away. I, Yen, my friend Yenna and I just started working out. Um, like I couldn't walk to check our mailbox without like mm-hmm. taking breaks. It was, it was pretty, I was, I also have a lot of knee. I have knee. I had the unhappy triad. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. So I fell off of a ladder and tore my ACL, MCL and the meniscus in my left mm-hmm. knee broke my ankle. It was a, it was not a fun time. So I was very immobile. It was very hard to move. So I started just doing what I could and taking as many breaks as I needed. So I had bands and we had a treadmill. We had a bike. I was very scared to use the treadmill because I was over the weight limit. Um, I wasn't on the bike. And so I just, I buy, I just did what I could, which was not a lot. And so even still today, it's, progressive on a weekly basis. I'm able to do more than I was the week before. So I started just working out, doing circuit training in a a slow way. Um, The first time I did, I walked a mile for time in, it was the end of June, early July. And I really didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Like I flirted with the idea of taking a bucket. I went to a very secluded area because I didn't want anyone to see me. I was very embarrassed. And I walked a mile. It took me over 40 minutes to walk a mile. And I was so happy that I didn't have to stop. Like I didn't have to sit down. I stopped a lot, and I but I stayed standing. Um, I never like I, w- I was also afraid if I laid down on the ground. At this point in my journey, it was hard for me to get up off of the ground if I was on the ground. Um, and just recently, I've been able to do a burpee and go all the way down to the ground and all the way up. And that's been something progressive. I started doing that. I had my um my bar. Um, I don't know my my barbell. I don't know why I'm like mind dumped to that, but I had it set up pretty high on our squat rack, and I would just kind of do like a the same same as like a wall push up, and then I would like go up. So I went from pretty high, like probably chest level, just kind of working it down to where now I can go all the way down, and so everything's been progressive to answer your question. Well, and I know Yancey's anxious to uh, ask a question, but. I saw you do your farmer carries on video today and you would never know that's where you were because you were moving during those farmer carries. I, I was really impressed. I recognize this. You made that is 80 pounds. She's carrying for the viewers and listeners out there, 80 pounds, 40 each hands. And she was moving with them. I guarantee you with that 80 pounds, you were going way faster than that 40 minute mile <laughs> that, that you walked with no weight at all. We'll be right back to the interview, but first a little bit from Athletic Brewing Company, today's sponsor. You don't have to choose between an ice cold beer after a race and your health, thanks to Athletic Brewing Company. 
Athletic Brewing Company's innovative process allows them to brew great-tasting craft beers without the alcohol, from IPAs to stouts to golden ales and more. They offer a full selection of beers, starting at only 50 calories, so you can keep your head clear and enjoy the refreshing taste of beer anytime and anywhere. And they're part of a program called Two for the Trails. For every product purchased, Athletic Brewing Company donates 2% of sales to protecting and restoring local trails. They're pioneering a craft brew revolution. You don't have to sacrifice being your best to enjoy a great brew. In fact, check out their website to see a list of awards that their beers have won. Check your local store, but if you can't find it, they'll ship it. Place an order at athleticbrewing.com, and you can get free shipping on two six-packs or more. And new customers can save 10% off the entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer. FitAid is a clean sports recovery drink. Race dirty, recover clean. You've heard us say it before. FitAid is 45 calories, certified non-GMO tested, vegan, paleo-friendly, certified gluten-free, kosher, and never contains any artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, or sodium. Even the zero sugar option It's keto-friendly and has only 5 calories, and it's naturally sweetened with monk fruit and stevia. And then there's FitAid's Recovery Blend. It has glutamine, glucosamine, turmeric, BCAAs, omega-3s, CoQ10, a full B complex, and electrolytes. It's perfect for after your workout, your hike, your bike ride, or your race. Can you imagine drinking a plain old soda when you could have this? FitAid is a product of LifeAid, the functional beverage company, and they're an official partner of our Spartan Race series. Listen, each ice-cold can of FitAid, it contains ingredients to help your body recover, and it never contains any artificial flavors or sweeteners. So visit LifeAidBevCo.com, enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout, and save 30%, plus you get fast, free shipping. Okay, back to the interview. I feel that one of the most amazing gifts that you're providing for people, I, I, this morning I watched your, why I, why how I got fat, why I'm fat, you know, that video. I love your title. You just put it out there, girl. And that's so freaking cool. You just put it out there. I watched that and and you talk about the roller coaster ride with the different diets and this this plan and that plan. And I could kind of tell as I was listening and I didn't know where you were going to go because I'd never watched video before. And I was like, oh, she's on the roller coaster. And then at the end of the video, you talk about how you came to the conclusion that Whoa, I got to get off that roller coaster and no more fad diets. I'm simply going to move more. And you gave these very simple, and my wife and I always say, the greatest book out there would be written on one page. It only takes about one page to write it on these basic things we need to do. And it was so amazing that you put the big bow, pretty bow on your video with, these are the basic things that I'm doing. And for the first time in my life, it feels, it feels right. The uh, the thing I like, I know it's a long journey. It's a lot of weight. I would never recommend anyone to like gain a bunch of weight so that they could then lose it. And because I mean, I feel like it doesn't matter. You could have five pounds or you can have, you know, 200 pounds. A lot of women face that this cycle that it's, it's, I feel like it transcends your actual weight of wanting to lose weight, not knowing how, and then finding some crutch or some like something extra to do that's like super intense. It's like slow and steady doesn't, it's not enough. It's not enough to make us feel like we're doing something right now. And sometimes you just have to wait, like you just have to work through it. And I think working through it in such a slow way, I every single time I've ever lost weight. And I had lost a lot of weight over, I think it was like 140 something pounds. And I gained all of that weight back, but I kept that weight off for years, years. But there was not a day that I did, I wasn't anxious about gaining that weight back because I lost it doing a protein sparing modified fast that was doctor supervised. I ate 800 calories a day for almost a year. Mm. And um, so I lost all the weight, but When I went off that, I always was worried that something would happen and I would gain it back. And then I did. It was my worst fear. And I almost like my anxiety, a life circumstance, all of these things lined up and I did gain it back. And that's a horrible thing to go through to have lost the weight. And so many of us do that. It's I'm I'm far from 
a rare case. I think it's way more common to have lost a massive amount of weight and gained it back than it is to sustain it. But I have no anxiety. Going slow and steady, doing it like I have, having all of these non-scale points of measure, so like doing a mile for time, seeing how fast I can bike 10 miles on my cycle, doing now DECA. DECA is something that helps me push. It's It helped me push outside of my comfort zone. And it's new. I haven't, I didn't hear about DECA for until fairly recently. Um, my coach at iFit, Yanis, she owns iFit. Um, she's like, you should do DECA. And I'm like, maybe later. And she's <laughs> like, no, you should do it now. And I'm like, well, can I modify? And she's like, yeah. And so I started training and I did like, I never, until the day of, I never did lunges all the way down because I was scared. Um, and I never did full burpees all the way down. And I didn't do the step up, um, which I still, it's its a, a loud modification, but I never did an allowed modification. I had a lower box that I practiced on. So when I actually did the DECA, something about that, something about just being at that starting line, I don't know what happened because I was pretty sure I was going to like tap out of the lunges just because my left leg is so bad and I'm so scared. But I did it. I had no pain. It was in. It's like so. I started reading um, Joe Dissena's new book, and he says the parable of the elephant, where the elephant's chained up. It's like chapter two. It's like right at the beginning, chapter one. And I'm like, I'm that elephant. I even thought about making a whole like video on YouTube, being like, I'm an elephant, <laughs> because it really is like that. Where I have tethered myself with a weak string to all of these limitations. And I, I, I'm strong enough to pull away. And it's it's very exciting to, to pull away and to see that, to see things that are in my head, like doing my lunges all the way down or doing a burpee all the way. So that was, yeah, got away from the question. I, re I, re I remember seeing the, uh, the video and you were saying, oh, I don't, I'm not going to do the, the lunges. I'm not going to get my knee all the way down. And, you know, after watching so many DECA events over these last couple of years, I was watching every rep and every rep was right. So uh, that was that was fun to watch. Um, you know, it's interesting to hear you talk about really testing yourself, you know, uh, you know, walking a mile for time, um, riding a bike for time, doing a DECA for time. Um is it is it just an internal thing where you're you're testing yourself and you get you're kind of gamifying this this uh you know journey for yourself and and using those as benchmarks to to getting you to where you want to be I think in the beginning I just I I didn't approach the first mile with I'm going to do this regularly and measure my process my progress exactly I kind of just did it like can I even walk a mile at the weight that I am now? Because mm -hmm. I I had so many layers of things that I was scared of, even just trying. And then I did it. And then I thought having a non-scale, like a literally, like not measurements, not not body related as a in relation to like physical looks. And I mean, arguably, none of these things are just tied to looks, but then they are too at the same time. And that's been a struggle for me. So a physical way of testing myself to measure my progress. So it takes that how I look out and it's kind of how I feel. So when you do a one mile and like that first mile that I did, I had to stop. And recently I did... um I did a mile for time with a with a sixty pound vest, and I carried carried weights. This is very recent, like lot the beginning of the month, um, and it was just as hard to carry it. I did it a lot faster than I did the very first mile, but it was very hard. I had to stop a lot. So just having that non scale point of measure, it's helped propel me forward when I have had. Like when I've gotten stagnant um, or if it's very triggering is the word I'll use. I feel like triggering is a word that's maybe overused. When I force myself to track every single thing I eat all of the time, 
it I get into a bad mindset. Um, it's kind of like a pendulum. Um, I I naturally am pretty intense about things, so I'll swing very hard. Like the 800 calorie diet sounds horrific, but it really wasn't that hard for me to like be that intense. The problem is, is that eventually, even years later, the pendulum is going to swing back with that equal force, I feel like, in my life and maybe most people's. So I needed something to help me stay moderate, like a moderate, a small swing. So that way I'm not swinging out of control either way. And having a non-scale point of measure, like now the deck is going to be for me or because I'm I'm at the point where I can't walk a mile faster, like month to month, my mile is not going to get much faster. I am very short. I have very short squatty legs. I can walk a mile in about 17 minutes, sometimes a little faster, sometimes a little slower. Like it's not going to improve that much. Um, so finding the deck has been really awesome for me for that reason, because now I have a new... I have a new point of measure that I'll be able to do and get hopefully significant improvements. We love, we love the, uh, we have, we like to call it the mic drops, my friend. And, and that, um, your, your pendulum explanation was a mic drop, not maybe not necessarily for all the viewers and listeners, but for the professionals that really know this world, that was a mic drop moment. I, I can hear my wife listen to this saying, Oh my gosh, that was a very powerful statement that that she said there um and i really appreciate you sharing that the the reality of when you swing it too hard jared and i'd like to call it it, when it's not a realistic plan and when that when then when you're when it's over you you're all you're you can't wait to go back to something other than what you were doing that's an unrealistic plan that won't fit into the lifestyle long term and it sounds like you're on a wonderful approach that when you reach your goal, there's there's going to be no reason to, to step away from that goal. All right, folks, I told you at the beginning of part one that this was going to be pull you to the edge of your seat, engaging and educational for so many people out there. It was. Episode two gets even better. Make sure you tune in. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up. Do you want to be ready for anything? Download Joe's free ebook at spartan.com slash ready for anything. Do you know someone who needs a little help staying motivated, staying informed, getting or staying mentally and physically resilient? We're here three days every week with a mix of content to help you stay strong from mindset to nutrition and everything in between. Listen every Tuesday to hear Joe DeSena, Spartan Race founder and CEO, and the rest of the week, join us for DECA endurance and classic episodes. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company and FitAid. Race dirty, recover clean with FitAid Sports Recovery Drink. Visit lifeaidbevco.com and enter the code SPARTAN30 at checkout to get 30% off their full line of functional lifestyle beverage blends and Go Powder Sticks. Athletic Brewing Company. Their innovative process allows them to brew great tasting craft beer without the alcohol. New customers can get 10% off their entire order with the code SPARTAN10. Limit one per customer.